this is the X Terrain, the top spec variant in the Isuzu D Max lineup. And as part of that Ute lineup, it has had a few updates. One of those is 50 kilograms more gross combined mass, some nice interior styling tweaks, including some pretty nifty red stitching. It also has a more easy to switch off and on lane support assist system, but nothing mechanical has changed about it. There's been a bit of wet weather here today, so there's plenty of mud. We're gonna have lots of fun. Is this worth the extra money? Well, that's all we're here to find out, so stick around. <laughs> If you want to know something in particular about this vehicle, then that's easy. You can jump ahead. There are time codes on the screen now. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, there are chapter markers below. And as always, if you are watching this review on YouTube, make sure you hit like, share it with your mates, and make sure you hit subscribe and tap that bell icon while you're at it to stay up to date with all of our content. Standard features on the X-Terrain include a 9-inch multimedia touchscreen with sat-nav, Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. It also has an 8-speaker sound system, roof rails, a hard roller cover, sports bar and more. Updates to the variant include the 50kg gross combined mass increase, a factory fitted tow bar receiver as standard, lane support switch on and off and styling tweaks inside. It also has an auto dimming mirror and heated front seats and door mirrors. Price as tested for this updated X-Terrain is $65,900. We'll put the X-Terrain's dimensions up on screen now just to give you an idea of its size. But in terms of styling, well, it looks pretty good. It has that contemporary ute feel. It really embraces that outdoorsy, active lifestyle sort of sense of adventure. Under here, you can't see it because I've thrown a bit of mud on it, but it is grey paint looks pretty good. It's got those big satellite dish 18 inch wheels and it's got the roof rails and the roller top cover and all in all it's a pretty sort of adventurous package. At the business end of this ute, which is obviously the tray, it all pretty much checks out. You've got this roller cover which works fine. That roller cover does eat into your load space just a little bit. There's a durable tub liner and a couple of tie down points in the tub itself. There are no massive changes to the interior of the X-Terrain. It really is limited to the red stitching, which does look nice. But if you've spent any time in a Ute or any time in a D-Max, you know what to expect. It is a functional space. It is comfortable. There is sufficient room, head, leg and knee. And you get plenty of the usual storage spaces. You get cup holders here in the backs of the seats. You get air vents and you get a USB here to charge up your devices. And there's a nifty cargo hook there to throw a bit of a shopping bag on. But up front, it does get a little bit snazzier. And the reason for that is there are a lot more piano black inserts, a lot more leather accented upholstery and more and more of that red stitching which I kind of like the look of. It, of course, has the nine inch multimedia touchscreen. And as with any D-Max cabin, there are plenty of storage spaces and it's all pretty easy to use. And it's a nice mix of functionality with a little bit of a premium feel to everything. The X-Terrain has a three litre four cylinder turbo diesel engine and it produces 140 kilowatts and 450 newton meters. That's not a whole lot of torque, but it delivers it in such a nice fashion. You'll see later when we're on road and off road that it makes up for it. It is matched to a six speed automatic transmission and it has a part time four wheel drive system. The noteworthy thing about this engine is the fact that that torque is available across a wide rev range and I'll talk about that more later. But this is also a proven combination, this engine and automatic transmission, and it works really well. On road, the D-Max remains quite a low key revelation because it's nowhere near as ordinary on road as people might assume. It's actually pretty good. Steering is nice and light, but retains a keen balance about it when you're on the blacktop. Throttle response 
is good. Acceleration is pretty smooth from a standing start and also when you need to do a gentle overtake of someone on the highway. The engine and transmission remain quite a standout in the D-Max because it really is a low-key, no-stress performer. Sure, the D-Max remains a little bit tractor-like, a little bit truck-like, but Isuzu has worked to smooth out those rough edges. And you know what? I'm kind of fond of it just the way it is. It may not be quite as refined as something like the Ranger or the Amarok, but it's still pretty good. There is a little bit of diesel clatter in the background, just a touch, but otherwise in-cabin noise or stuff you hear from the outside like wind noise from the wing mirrors, engine noise, or even road surface noise is kept to a minimum. And adding to plenty of the positives in the D-Max's favour, well, is the fact that the seats are comfortable and it is nice if you have to spend lots of time in it driving or as a passenger. On dirt tracks or gravel roads, the D-Max has a nice way of just trucking along. That engine and transmission work so well together on-road and off-road, but it, it just keeps you rolling along almost in a quite a lazy fashion, but that makes it a relaxing drive because the transmission's not sort of searching up and down for the sweet spot. It's always sitting pretty much right where it needs to be. Suspension on utes is a, always a bit of an elephant in the room because it's never going to be as well sorted as a wagon or a strictly road going vehicle. Having said that though, the suspension in the D-Max does a pretty good job of just keeping everything pretty settled and pretty controlled. So there are no mechanical changes or four-wheel drive system changes to this D-Max. They really are mostly cosmetic. But that's fine because as it is, the D-Max is a rock solid four-wheel drive in stock standard form. The engine and transmission work really well on road. You've seen that already, but they are really good off-road as well. It's a smooth driving experience and you can keep revs nice and low and this engine there's a lot to like about it it never feels stressed out or you never have to rev the hell out of it because it just ticks along nicely there is plenty of grunt plenty of torque and that torque is accessible across a wide rev range and that means a lot when you're four-wheel driving low range gearing is pretty good traction control is pretty good and while i have praised it in recent reviews, I've had a chance to get in some other contemporary rivals of the D-Max and it doesn't quite feel as refined as the systems in those four-wheel drives. It is good, it is effective, but it just lacks that tiny bit of quiet efficacy that some of the other systems exhibit. But there are a few trade-offs in the new D-Max and I have mentioned those in recent previous reviews. And one of the factors is the rubber, the tires on the D-Max. And you can understand a vehicle manufacturer picking the rubber that's gonna offer a nice, quiet, comfortable ride on road. Well, their weakness off road is quickly exposed. They're not terrible, but they're just not suited for off-roading. The D-Max has a sufficient amount of wheel travel Ground clearance is listed as 240 mils, which is okay, although the D-Max does feel a tad bit vulnerable to scraping the undercarriage over things I'd consider sort of medium duty terrain. Throttle response is pretty good. It's not too sensitive to lumps and bumps when you're doing low speed four wheel driving. So while the D-Max has benefited from the tweaked traction control system, which went through in the last round of this ute, it also has the rear diff lock. And that's just a nice addition to your off-roading systems. It just gives you that little bit of extra bite when you need it 
when you're climbing a hill like this. As mentioned earlier, the X-Terrain's gross combined mass has been increased by 50 kilograms. And in practical terms, that means you are given a little bit more leeway with how much you can pack on board and tow. The entire D-Max range has a five-star ANCAP safety rating. That's the maximum, and that's from testing in 2020. It has eight airbags, AEB, adaptive cruise control, a reversing camera, and a whole stack more. Official fuel consumption is 8 litres per 100 kilometres on a combined cycle. On this test I recorded actual fuel consumption of 9.8 litres per 100 kilometres. And because the D-Max has a 76 litre tank, that gives me an effective touring range of about 745 kilometres. The D-Max has a 6 year 150,000 kilometre warranty and 7 years of roadside assistance. Service intervals are scheduled for every 12 months or 15,000 kilometres, whichever occurs soonest. Cap price servicing covers your first seven appointments. The D-Max X-Terrain is merely the latest in a long line of utes to have the vehicular equivalent of a nip and tuck, but it also has some changes of substance. And I'm talking about the tow bar receiver as standard and the GCM increase. Those things are meaningful changes to a vehicle that makes a pretty good touring platform. It is comfortable, it is capable. Nothing has changed with this new update, but that's fine because it was already a pretty good tourer. But what do you reckon? Have your say in the comments section below.